Right, this is going to be a bit of a different vlog today. I've got a new vlogging camera, it's a phone again. I'm going to get out, do some reviews on this, take some pictures with it and see what we can get. It's the Galaxy S9 Plus, brand new phone now, it's been out a few weeks I'm told by the guy who sold it to me anyway. And it's not going to be a massive in depth review on the phone, it's just going to be a kind of review how well can the camera cope with this. All the, the B-roll from this um, vlog is going to be shot majority on this, in part from when I'm showing it off, which obviously I'm going to have to use something else. Um, so I'm going to get up, get outside, get to location. I'm going to be comparing this to an actual proper DSLR camera, an old phone as well, which I still think is probably king of camera phones or king of the camera on a phone, should I say. Um, yeah, looking forward to how this comes out. I'll catch up with you when I've set up on location. Right, I'm up at the location now. Sorry, it's quite windy up here today. It's Dartmoor, so it's always pretty bad. Got Hayter Rock in the background here, you can see. I'm just sheltered down behind this tour, which is kind of Holwell Lawn, it's called. And I'm gonna be shooting a famous shot over here with the tree. Um, it's Holwell kind of lawn tour with a kind of tree growing out of it. Been up here a few times with the actual camera, uh, the DSLR that is. Um, Got some nice pictures of it here over the years. Come up again, it's about 10 minutes before sunset, so just about in time to catch some red um, color in the sky. This is gonna be a real test of the Samson S9 Plus um, because it's gonna be getting dark now. It's gonna be getting quite da um, dark and the camera's gonna start struggling a bit more. I'm gonna be using it on a tripod. Um, I've got an adapter which kind of clamps on the phone which fits on the tripod fine, so it's gonna be dead stable apart from a bit of the wind up here, which I can't really do much about. But that should um, get us some better shots. And I'm gonna be comparing the images from this, um, this phone that I'm doing the vlogging on now. So you can probably see, you can see how kind of the video quality's come out. It's a bit dark today, the, the video quality I've done with it, but I did actually get out with this phone yesterday when I actually picked it up from the, from the store and um, took some kind of roll and some pictures of them. I actually went down to um, a coast uh, throwwood point, I think it's called, down the South Hams. Took some shots with it there and I also took some shots with my other phone, an old phone from about five years ago, which I'll show you in a minute, and also with uh, my normal camera and the GoPro copy I have. So I've already got some shots for comparison, which I'll go through on the computer with you a bit later. So I'm coming up here now to get them a bit different around sunset it's going to be a bit dark a bit harder for the camera to or the phones to to capture so before i show you the other things i'm going to compare to why have a, a phone for a vlogging camera well it's always on you it's generally always charged they're portable slim the screens are good on them they've got good live view good kind of bright screens you can see what you're doing and they're just so useful obviously you can ring people you can use it as a flashlight and phones for the last couple of years have been so good at video, even on the front camera, that you can kind of do most of your vlogging on them now. I don't really see always a need for a kind of independent vlogging camera. Also, they seem to have really good dynamic range. They seem to struggle a bit with low light. But apart from that, you can actually get some quite good footage on them um, for vlogging. The m vast majority of my um, video work is, was done on a Samsung S7. Now I'm on the S9 Plus. I'm always happy the footage off the S7, apart from it was a bit kind of um, soft when it was dark. Um, Samsung seemed to have an aggressive noise reduction on their phones. Hopefully the S9 is going to be better. Um, going to try it today, see what it's like with stills. The video is so good on them, I don't really have to go into that anymore. But I want to see how close can this phone get to a proper camera um, on still. So this is um, a Canon... 6D, it's an entry level kind of pro or kind of enthusiast 
camera, I suppose you call it. These cameras are about three years old now and they still retail for about £1,300. The lens is about another £500 on top of it. So this is a, a, a good camera and this phone obviously isn't going to match that. But we're just going to see how close we can get it. But a good comparison I do have is a phone from about four or five years ago, which in my opinion is the phone that's had the best camera ever, which is this beast, which is a Nokia Lumia 1020. Now these were one of the first phones ever made to shoot and save the files in DNG RAW, which I will be shooting and saving all these images in, the Samsung, this, the camera, and the GoPro copy that I use. Now this has a 30 or 41 megapixel image sensor on it. It actually saves, the format I'm gonna be shooting today, is actually gonna be saving them at 34 megapixel. So this is gonna be a bit of a beast, and it's gonna be quite hard to beat. But if the 12 megapixel snapper in the S9 can beat this, I'm going to be very impressed. I'm going to get set up any minute, get the phone on, um, get the camera set up, get this um, set up, do shots. I'm going to run through some shots of this. I'm going to use the 2.4 aperture. That's another thing. Why is it the S9 plus kind of good for photography? Uh, good as a vlogging camera. Well. The camera in it now does two apertures. You've got 2.4, which for photographers in bright light is good because that's higher than most apertures on most smartphones now. That's going to give you a sharper image. We're always after that as landscape photographers. You want to get the sharpest image we can. So even when you're doing B-roll and filming, if you can get that 2.4 aperture on there, your, your B-roll is going to be better. Also, it does 1.4. Now that's going to be really good for two things. Blowing out the background more, give you more depth of field. And I'll test that at some point. I'll get two shots, one at f.4, one at f2.4. And then um, I'll put them up and you can see how much difference the background blur makes. It's also going to make a big difference to when it's getting darker. It's going to be able to make the, the camera capture more light or the phone capture more light at 1.4, which means we're going to get less of a grainy image, which means the camera or the phone's going to have to do less noise reduction, which means you're going to get a sharper, less blurry image. So it's good for a few things. The S9 Plus also has a two time zoom um, camera, which is good for just getting closer range. Some of the B row I've done walking over here, I did at that, so you can kind of see how much closer I get than uh, the original one. I'll probably try and take a picture of it on the normal kind of zoom so you can kind of gauge the difference. I'm going to use in the same focal range on this, the zoom range kind of thing, to match the camera and the phone on this one as well. And just to compare them, I've got a GoPro copy as well, which is a 12 megapixel one. It's a Xamar Y or Y it's called, and it's about the same quality as a GoPro, GoPro Hero 4, so it's pretty good. So I'll take a shot of that as well to compare it. I'll go and get set up now. It's gonna be about 10 minutes before the magic happens with the light. I'll try and get some pictures on these phones, set them up, and I'll catch up with you in a minute. Right, I'm back home now. Um, gonna go through some of the pictures that I've taken with the phone, some of the comparison shots. Um, so yeah, about the phone, um, I'm really happy about it. Um, I've had it for about five days now. It's definitely quicker than the S7 it's replaced. Um, I get it's new, so it's gonna be quicker and it hasn't slowed the software down as much and stuff like that. But it definitely is uh, quite a quick phone. Um, the camera's really good and I'm really happy. Having the two times zoom camera is actually really nice. It's a decent level of zoom, that two times. Uh, the dual aperture, 1.5, 2.4, yeah, that's gonna make a difference. It's gonna give us a sharper image, like I touched on a minute ago in this vlog, um, if we're kind of outdoors and we wanna get like a sharper image, or when it's night, it's gonna allow us to um, get that, that kind of better quality of the low light. And also you can use it to get some um, um, a bit better depth of field, a bit more background blur as we call it, or bokeh as we call it, um, in some of the images. So I'll flash some of them, I've done some comparison shots. I've also taken a shot on the actual camera of a lens at f1.4 um, on a full frame camera and you'll see the difference, the massive difference you get between a camera lens this small or the, a camera sensor this small at f1.5 and when you have a big camera sensor at um, 
1.4 it makes a massive difference having that big sensor really gives you more blur in the background um, so yeah really happy with the phone it does some quite cool things um, um, yeah so like I say it's not really a review of the phone itself it's mainly a camera review this one it's just going to be something that I know about cameras I'm going to put the stills from this against the stills from the actual camera uh, a little bit about the b-roll for video which is the main reason I use the phone to be honest um, definitely better than the S7 um, it's not as soft the image is definitely sharper the b-roll you've seen mainly in this when I was up at Dartmoor um, it's not that good because it was very dark there it was kind of around sunset but it was so misty and uh, not misty over so overcast there wasn't much light coming through anyway so the phone did struggle there but I'm really happy of how the b-roll from um, the time we went down to Kingsway went down to the coast looks on it. It looks a lot definitely sharper than the F7 would do so I'm happy with that. The front facing camera also looks really good. I don't know if they've upgraded the specs but it's an 8 megapixel camera on this now on the front and it does actually look quite nice, get some nice images with it. Um, nice kind of b-roll and stuff like that. The audio quality is very good on it. I do use an external mic most of the time I'm recording now just because of the wind noise so it's not all down to the phone the, the audio you hear in it. it is, most of it is from um, the external mic. This is being filmed on the, the actual proper camera now, the, the Canon, so the audio is going to be terrible. I apologise for it already. The built in mics in these cameras are pretty terrible. I'm just going to go through now some of the images, um, stop wafting on, go through some of the images that I've taken and we're going to do a bit of comparing between them. So I'll get the screen software recording. Probably going to make my laptop struggle a lot unfortunately so it's going to get quite noisy in a minute. Um, right, These three shots here, these are basically shots straight out the cameras with no editing done at all. This is down at, on Kingsway at this kind of um, gully going up between the cliffs. Um, on the left one here we have, um, that's a CR2 file, so that is off the Canon. This one in the middle I know is off the Nokia phone because it has a really weird aspect ratio. And the one over here is off, the one on the very right is off the Samsung S9 Plus. Um, general basic, this is just kind of showing you that even a proper camera in harsh conditions is not going to um, get you a brilliant image. You need to start using filters or doing a lot of editing. The sky in all of these images is totally blown out. The only one that's getting a bit of detail in it is the Nokia. But if you look, the shadows on this are darker. So what this phone's done is it's exposed the whole image a bit darker. So it's actually false. It's not actually giving us a proper representation. You'll notice the Nokia has got the white balance off as well. It wasn't quite that blue, the water. So the Samsung is bang on the money with the white balance of the um, of the actual camera, the Canon. So definitely wins it there. Um, I won't do much more into these images because I've got three edited versions. Now these are versions I've edited on the computer. Most people probably won't do that with their images off this phone. But it just shows if you want to, they are DNG files. You can go and edit them and get good image quality out of them. So we're going to... Look at these images. Now what I've done is I've resized all the images, the one from the Canon and the one from the Nokia, down to 12 megapixels. So when we zoom in, uh, we're all going to be looking at them in roughly the same kind of detail. Um, right, let's look at some of the details. So um, I've brought the shadows up in this, so it is pushing the image. It's really trying to make the image um, kind of struggle to get all the kind of details out, the darks and the shadows and the lights and stuff like that. Um, so we're just going to look at some of the detail. The sky's blown out. Um, it's got kind of a bit of noise in there. It's got a lot of noise across this section. But it's not really that bad. I mean, to be fair to it, that's a pretty good um, shot. Looking at 100% zoom on it, the um, kind of rock out here is a bit soft on the edges. But again, considering it's on a phone, that's not bad at all. Um, the rocks down here are a bit washed out looking. Um, you can see the detail at 200% is pretty soft. We've got a lot of noise in here. Um, again, but we're kind of nitpicking here. So you've got lots of noise in the dark bits. You can really see that kind of grain coming out. And we do also on this one, I've noticed, I had a quick look already, we have got a bit of colour noise down here with this red in the water. Stuff like that, but not generally not a bad picture at all. Um, 
The lighter sections here are better, although they do look a tad soft. Um, but yeah, not bad at all really. Now this is the um, Xiam, Xiam Yi, I don't have a clue how you pronounce it. But this is a 16 megapixel image actually. Um, now this is an action camera, so it's kind of suited to be focusing closer in and rather than further away. So you can't really blame this, but it is quite soft. So um, not soft as such, but I mean, there's just literally hardly any detail in those rocks at all. It looks a bit like a cartoon. And it's not too bad noise wise. Um, that's pretty acceptable. That's 200 percent There's not much noise in that at all. But again, the rocks, the shadows. Yeah, I mean, they're just kind of like pasty mess, really. There's no actual detail as such in them. I mean, this is going to struggle more anyway because it's a, a bigger field of view, so we're kind of almost zooming in a lot more to get to the same view as we are in the other images. So for what that is, I'd say that's quite acceptable and that's perfectly fine, but it's not a touch on the, the Samsung. So don't go buying a GoPro to replace, or not say GoPro, don't go buying a GoPro Hero 4 or anything around that era to replace the, the camera quality on these uh, S9s because the S9 will be better. Uh, right, we're looking at the Nokia now. Again, there's a lot more noise in the Nokia. A lot more noise. It always used to be quite noisy, the sensor on this. But because it's such a massive image, you can get rid of it quite easily. So, um, Now we're at 200% there. The rock is a lot sharper on this compared to the um the samsung if we compare them you can see a lot sharper a lot more detail better exposed um looking into the rocks i mean the detail on those rocks is a lot better if i go onto it on here find the same rock roughly if we go to 200 percent we can see it's just generally a lot sharper on the nokia um the images come out a lot better. Um, it's still noisy and it's still a bit grainy. Um, the colours are better on the Samsung, definitely better colours. Um, but I probably would say the Nokia's got the edge on the detail fractionally. It's grainy, but it's a bit finer the grain and it's normally easy to clear up fine grain. Um, the Nokia also suffers less from colour noise, the water down here, uh, there is a bit of noise but it's not so patchy so definitely better on that. So the Nokia's definitely got better detail retention. Um, we'll look at the actual camera now. Um, coming down to the rocks we can see that the Canon has got a lot more detail in the rocks, a lot lot more details. Um, hardly any noise either, I mean we're at 400% now. These are the edited shots from Dartmoor, which you saw in the vlog. And the Samsung actually did really well here. Um, the Nokia had optical image stabilization with motors and ball bearings, and it was good for about six months, and it used to wear out. So it was really bad at focusing and keeping it sharp when it was getting dark. So. Um, load these up and have a look. Right now this is the images from Dartmoor, start on the Nokia. The white balance is terrible and this is well off, it's making everything look a bit purple and pink, uh, like a dark shade of blue. Um, got this halo effect around the edge here, you can see with the pointer now, and there's a lot of noise in it. It's just a bit of a soft image, it's not very good at all. Um, it definitely didn't focus properly this time. It should be a better image than this. You can see how soft the rocks are. This is the better of the few images I took with this phone. So it just shows this um, phone is a nightmare at focusing, which is one of the strong points of the S9 actually. I've never or very rarely ever had any focus issues with it when I've been filming. 
it's always bang on. Uh, we're looking at the Samson now. The Samson's actually really good. I mean, it does have the benefit of this camera. It's, these pictures are taken about five to ten minutes before I took the other pictures, so it was lighter, so it had more easier conditions to work with, or better conditions to work with, should I say. Um, and it's actually got quite a nice pleasant shot. The white balance is about right. The colours are perfect. There's a nice pop to it. Um, there's enough detail in the sky. It's blown out in a few places. I couldn't recover the detail here and here. It's too bright for it. But generally speaking, this is an edited shot and this is um, kind of bang on really. All I've done in these shots is up the shadows, bring down the um, highlights, kind of bit of uh, adding colour to them because it's quite a dull overcast flat day. Um, no sharpening of or noise reduction has been done on any of these images. So there is a lot of noise in this one. You can see at 200% there is odd colour patches here, odd colour patches there. Um, but yeah, really happy this one. This easily beats the Nokia in this one, which is absolutely a shocking picture. And this is the actual camera itself. So we can see, and this was taken probably about 15 minutes after the other one and the ISO is very high in this because it's quite dark. But if we look at the two of those together, there's not a massive difference in them. Um, the camera's sharper, yeah, it's definitely sharper, but not by much. Um, there's less issues with the image. Um, if we come over here, for instance, zoom in to 300%, we can see there's a bit of noise, but it's pretty good, usable. Whereas on the Samsung at 200% we are very noisy and lots of odd colours but again it's only if you zoom in massively in so um, to be honest that's a proper win for um, the Samsung because I didn't think it would get anywhere near as good as that in those conditions with it getting dark this, this shot was done at f1.4 as well so it's going to struggle to get a sharper image with this but it does show that that f1.5 does show that f1.5 is helping with the images, uh, making it less grainy and less noisy. Um, yeah, really happy with um, how it's come out. If we look at the dynamic range between the two of them, um, not amazingly different either. And I've not used any filters on the Canon, so this is kind of straight as the camera would capture it. Um, looking at the action cam again, we're going to probably quite a very soft image, same old story really, uh, not amazing at all, yeah it's not even worth looking into that really, so definitely the Samsung's the winner here, um, it's not as good as the camera but you can't expect it to be, for what it is it's, it's done really well. Um, right the other ones are, now these are straight out the camera now so these have not been edited at all, so these is as if you were to take the picture and put it on Facebook or something like that. They're three simple images of kind of an industrial roof. So we'll just zoom straight into the same point on them, 200%. Uh, That's the Samsung. This is the GoPro action cam type thing and this is the Nokia. Um, well, yeah, this is an 8 megapixel on the Nokia because I saved it as straight out of the camera. It actually saves them at 8 megapixels, so it's going to be slightly different. So I might just up that a bit just to bring it into the same kind of ballpark. So I'm actually reduced. This one is the action cam. It's obviously going to have the, the, the misfortune that it's not zooming in as much. So there's probably a, a kind of about the same zoom there at 100% as 200 on the others. Uh, but we'll just go in anyway for the sake of testing. Now it's quite soft, there's not much detail in that one. Uh, but again, the action cam is kind of configured to focus quite close, um, obviously being an action cam, so it's not going to have a brilliant um, kind of long range on the focus. So we can count that one straight away. Looking at the, the Nokia and the, um, the Samsung though, we're at 300% on the Nokia now to get roughly the same um, kind of zoom, it's roughly there. Um, we can see that the, the Nokia is softer, but it's actually kept 
quite a lot of detail in it, and a bit of sharpening, this would probably come up all right. The, the, the Samsung's actually done a really good job. The actual lines in that are very clean, especially if you look around here, um, along the join in the middle, whereas the Nokia has got nowhere near as much detail there. Overall, I think the Nokia wins it though because Samsung have ruined this image by using over the top sharpening. You look at all the noise on the edges here, and the contrast and edges, a very, very noisy image. I get we're zooming into the extreme here, but um, definitely too much sharpening in my opinion. These are straight out the camera, as I said, these haven't been edited at all, so because uh, they're not saved as DNG RAW files, these will have all what the manufacturers have kind of done in them to try and get them to look good. They're not natural images like we get out of a DNG. Um, they look quite good though. I mean, if you were to look at the knock here, is the clear winner there for vignetting. There is hardly any in the corners, whereas the Samsung, you can clearly see it's getting a bit darker in the corners um, down here in this part of the image, a bit onto the metal worker, and it's a bit darker in the clouds. Nokia doesn't actually have much vignetting at all. But overall, I'd probably say it's a draw. I mean, if Samsung weren't so aggressive with their noise reduction, they might even win that. I might even say they kind of won that test. Now, these are just to show the difference between f1.5 and 2.4 for background blur. Um, this one here is the 2.4. It's you can see we've got a bit of sharpness on the edge here, a um, bit of sharpness here still. The bokeh in the background isn't very pleasing on this phone at all, but it's mainly because of the harsh lighting conditions with the sun being up here. Um, but if we switch it over to the 1.5, we can see this just starting to lose its sharpness here. It's getting a bit soft. It's definitely softer here. Going out into the background, a lot softer around here, a lot nicer background blur, a lot softer and more pleasing. This one's a bit harsh. A bit harsh around the uh, the highlights here in the top left. This one's a lot more pleasing. So you, it does make a bit of difference to background blur if you're doing macro stuff, things like that. 